Oh, look at him when he changed his shirt. <laughs> we are live. So oh, we are. Sorry. We are live. I'm going to take a moment and share. Too late. Hold on. Okay. I just shared it with you. All right, welcome, welcome, Facebook land. We just wait till a couple, we get a couple people on. This is the technical stuff. I let, I let her deal with the technical stuff, you know. I, I let her handle this, the Facebook. All right, all right, all right. Okay. Let me say, please share. Miss Cynthia, do you see it? Not yet. I'm looking, but I'll get it. Okay. All right. It is 8.01. So we got to go ahead and get started. Welcome, Facebook. Please share, share, share. We're back. Let's talk with the Turners. And we are so glad to have all the guests that we have in the house tonight. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Oh, amazing. So we're back since May. And um, we're going to just rock the house tonight. I'm going to tell you who we have here tonight. Um, you know, it's amazing. Social media works so well, so well. So I met Miss Cynthia through social media and um, we we are exchanging books and all of that. And we decided that we'll be in each other project. Correct. Yes, yes, yes. 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 So um, this project was a little different for me because I'm usually used to writing by myself and I had to write with my husband. So it was like, <laughs> I say, I'm going, you're going to write most of this story yeah <laughs> so uh but it was a little different but it was amazing to do and i would do it again but cynthia green and james james and cynthia green are the visionary authors of this book that we all these wonderful couples are in called couples determined to be great we we great we just great right but it took work for us to get be great right that's so right. um, with that being said, Ms. Cynthia and Mr. James, can you tell us who you are? How did you come up with this idea and um, all that great information? Well, great evening, everyone. It is such a pleasure to be here. We'd like to thank the Turners for having us. Uh, we're just excited that all the uh, so many of the authors are on here tonight. And so um, we're just going to bring it tonight. We're going to keep it real. But um, we started this project, actually we had a vision through our coach in 2016 to do a book anthology. It just never came, I just never put the effort forth to actually do it. And it was gonna be based around an event that we was having. But this year, God just brought it back to me all of a sudden. And it was like, now is the time to do this book anthology. And one of the reasons why we wanted, uh, we wanted to do it is because there was so much negativity around marriage during COVID. And we were like, we know there's a lot of couples out there who are not struggling in their marriages, who are actually doing well. Not that we don't all have struggles sometimes, but I wanted to show the world there were some couples out there who were getting along and doing okay during COVID that there were some couples out there who actually loved their spouse through it all and in the midst of it all. So that was the reason and how we came up around the book 
I forgot to tell you guys about us, but James can share that part. Right. Well, and for me, it was more about helping other couples. See, they always talk about uh, couples, marriage ends, 50% ends in divorce, but they never talk about the positive 50%. They never talk about the couples that are thriving, the couples that are doing great. And this book uh, was on Cynthia and I's heart because it's about helping other couples. Because we know everyone on this call has a great marriage. But at one point, you may have been through some things or you may have went through some things. You know what I'm saying? So it's good to tell your story about what you've been through and how you came out on the other side. Like the word says, we overcome by our testimony. So a lot of times it's about our testimonies, what we've been through, how we made it through, you know, that, that trial and tribulation, how we came out on the other side. So when couples read this book and read all of the stories, they'll say, wow, I'm going through that now. You know, and here's a couple that's been through it. And here's what they did to overcome it. So it's helping us. So it's about helping other couples. And Cynthia and I are the co-founders, I'll tell you about ourselves, is of Marriage Built to Last. And we've been in business now, what, eight years now? Yes. About eight years. And it's all about helping other couples. It, it's not even about us. It's about what God laid on our heart to help other couples. That's why it's called uh, Marriage Built to Last. Because we truly believe our slogan is, if you build it, it will last. And we're talking about building it the correct way, building it on the foundation of God. So it will last because you have, if you have God in the center of your marriage, it's always going to last. You're always going to be able to come a lot of, overcome a lot of things. So that's what it's all about for us. Love it. Love it. Now, how did you come up with all these great, wonderful couples? I know how we got involved, but how did you come up with all these wonderful couples that's, that's on the screen today? Look like these power couples we got looking at us. You know what? Um, a lot of the couples God placed on my heart. Now, we did post it on social media, put it out there that we were doing a book. But almost every couple in the book, I personally picked up the phone and either called them or sent them a direct message. And, you know, they always say there's power in the follow up. And um, they always say in sales, you got to make the call. And so it's really, really true, you guys. If you really want to build your business, if you really want to create relationships, y'all, it's about yes. relationships. I had a relationship with almost every couple in the book in one way or the other, whether it was through social media, whether it was from us doing something together in the past, whether it's just from us being in the same room. But we had a relationship with almost every... I, let me just say, I had a relationship with almost every couple in the book. Uh, my husband knows I'm a social butterfly. <laughs> and so, no, I seriously reached out to almost every individual that is in this book. And if I did it, they reached out to me. We did our research. We looked to see, you know, what they'd been putting out there in the social world to make sure they were a good fit. And God let us know who was the right person for the, for the book. And, and like I always say, Many are called, but few are chosen. And so we, all of you were chosen. Yeah, chosen. <laughs> yeah right, right, right. For a reason. And and you said yes. So you felt it was laying on your heart too to help other couples. That's right. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I'll let my wife do the honors of going around in, in the group and let, let everyone introduce themselves. Um, where do you want to go first, babe? Left or right? So Let's go with the Peaks, because they are up top. Peaks, tell us your name, where you're from, how many years you've been married, and who was your couple out of the Bible, and why? Okay, well, we're excited to be here. Um, I'm Michelle and uh, my husband, uh, Rodney Peak, and we have been married for... Uh, 29 years this year. He's wow. laughing because he thought I was going to forget. See, <laughs> uh, 29 years uh, this year. So next year is a, a big year for us, the big 3-0. And um, the couple in the Bible that we chose with this project is Adam and Eve. Uh, mm -hmm. That was a favorite for, uh, for us. And I, I just want to say thank you guys for having us on and just want to thank uh, James and Cynthia for inviting us onto this project. It's always fun, always a, a divine um, time when we're connected uh, with James and Cynthia. And we're just so excited to be here with uh, you guys. And she also uh, left out that she tried to kiss me in the third grade. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I can't let that rest. It was on a field trip bus 
and she denies it every time I bring it up. Oh my goodness. That was not a part of the question. <laughs> We, are, we understand, bro. We understand. We, love it, we, love it. we want to make sure everybody know you <laughs> did that. <laughs> so did you tell us why you chose chose your um couple out the Bible? Oh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there was a lot of uh, identification on what they went through, um, especially the name of our chapter is um, Keeping the Enemy Out. Right? Ah. So they infiltrated the relationship. And we had an instance, we had instances where he had infiltrated our relationship. Mm -hmm. And to, to the glory of God, we kicked him back out. Oh, and, I know you know, that's right. Wow. <laughs> Listen, we all had to kick him out sometime too. <laughs> so we understand. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Just thank you so much for that. What yeah. about you, Miss Johnson? You're on mute. You're on mute. You're on mute. Well, hello there, everyone. I'm Dr. Philomena Johnson, and my husband is Dr. Dex Johnson. He's currently working on some things tonight, so he's unable to join us. Um, but uh, our couple that we chose was Priscilla and Aquila. Uh, Priscilla and Aquila represents us so, so, so very much because we are both tent makers, meaning that um, not actual tent makers, though, but tent makers in the gospel. We've been in marriage uh, ministry um, for about 13 years, um, serving in our church and family life uh, pastors and being able to see firsthand some of the challenges that couples uh, pretty much so are faced with. And we always talk about how good our marriage is. We've been married for 21 years. And definitely, we like to help couples build relationship intelligence so that they can live life to inspire and nurture their transformation, meaning that we look for couples to transform, not only um, socially, but economically, uh, psychologically. So we look at all those different elements, social, economic, um, type of things so that they can look at, you know, their lives in a, a different way. And when Cynthia actually asked us to do this book, I was thinking about my research and all my research sent around uh, marriage because we have been doing uh, brilliant uh, conferences for a number of years, probably about, I'd say about eight to nine years officially. And so I used to see some of Cynthia's uh, information come across Facebook. And I said, this sounds very interesting. And so when she asked us to actually um, be uh, some contributing authors for this book, I was very excited. Anything to do with marriage, to try to make marriage better for the next couple, that's what we look at. And Priscilla and Aquila was one that stayed together. They stuck together. They did ministry together. They worked together. And me and Dexter certainly worked together. And we try to make sure that we represent and that in those 21 years of marriage, we've had a solid marriage. It may not have always been, you know, bright all the time, but we help each other out. And, you know, we want this marriage to work. And I was listening to someone the other day that says that, you know, sometimes, you know, you got to you can't just jump out of the marriage. You got to stick to it. And I heard that from somebody that was much older than we were. And uh -huh. so that's my uh, reason for being here tonight. And thank you, uh, the Turners, for inviting us. Uh, we appreciate you. And one great thing, I am so excited that we've met couples that think like we do. Awesome. Awesome. Wonderful. Wonderful. Well, we're gonna go on down and we're gonna to go to the to the great Reverend Dr. Lisa Fiedelman. Is that how you say your last name? You got to unmute. It's Fiderman. 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 Yeah, there you go. Let the D's roll. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Dr. Lisa Fiderman. <laughs> yes, you got it. You got it. Um, well, the 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 couple that um that we chose are, is a, also Priscilla and Aquila, um, basically because they were ministers. My husband and I, Daryl and I are ministers as well. And um, we, uh, they were tent makers and we are um, bivocational as well. Um, they were bivo bivocational ministers and they, um, they were, 
um, they stayed together um, and they were able to, um, to, to mentor other people. Um, and so that's what um, Daryl and I have been doing for years. We've been married for 25 years. Um, this is our 25th year. Um, and um, in the book, we talk about uh, ministry challenges, um, which um, is something that uh, people don't normally talk about you know, when it comes to ministry and marriage and how um, those things combined can be difficult. But by the grace of God, God has um, blessed us to be able to stay together and uh, to be able to, um, to, um, to be um, the, the couple that we are. Um, so um, uh, yeah, that's, that's our story. What Lisa's not telling you is that in the 25th year, we have instituted what we call the rollout protocol. We are not splitting up unless you roll us out of here. Oh. <laughs> so, because my goal, and I don't know about you gentlemen, but my goal when getting married was to end up being a happy old married man. Oh, awesome. um, my earthly couple that I always admired was my uncle Clarence and his wife, Helen. They were married for approximately 70 some years um, oh. on their 65th wedding anniversary. Um, he whispered something in her ear that made her giggle like she was 16 all over again. And I had to know what that was. And when I got married, I talked to the older gentleman that I knew in church, as well as my Uncle Clarence. And one of the things they always said was, um, one, don't go to bed angry. Mm. Two, eat what she cooks. Um, three, as the old deacons told me, no tree box. If she goes out, <laughs> let her go out. Don't go looking. Um, be confident in what, that you put enough work in that she will come back. And I am I'm 25 years later, I'm happy to announce I've never tree boxed. I've ate everything she's cooked and we do not go to bed angry at each other. Those are the three things that we have always strived to do, even with the pressures of ministry, as well as with growing together, because it's not about whether I win the argument or she wins the argument. It's can we come to that common ground, that solution that helps mm -hmm. move us forward. A lot of folks wanna win. I gave up winning a long time ago. So now I'm 25 years in, it's the rollout protocol now. <laughs> good job, good job. I think we on the rollout too. That's it. <laughs> At some point, you can't trade them in, you, you know, and, and you don't want a newer model because it takes too long to get it right. Oh, oh say that again. Somebody needed to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> you can't, you cannot trade them in and you cannot get a newer model because it takes too long to break them back in. I, I am grateful to God that my wife has finally trained me. Yeah, I threw away the receipt. I can't even take it back in my order. I threw the receipt away. I went looking at oh, man, I lost that receipt. Oh, Lord, I can't take it. A long time ago. A long time ago. The receipt is gold. Okay, so I think it's Sharon and Emilio. Hello. Hi, everyone. Hello. Hey, hey. <laughs> Hi. Yeah, we, we've been married uh, 14 years. And um, Sharon, when she told me about the, about the book, of course, initially, I was a little bit resistant to it, wasn't sure, because we was talking about sharing our lived experiences with folks that, you know, we did not know. Um, but after seeking my heart and praying and asking God for direction, I realized it's not about us sharing, it's about who we can bless with our story. Um, and that's, that's where it resonated with me to say, oh yeah, sure, let's do this and put our story together and share our experiences. And the experience was, a uh, it was, um, it was a difficult time. It was a difficult time for us. But, you know, I think for me and our marriage, I was in it for the long haul. 
told her that from day one. This is the second time around, 14 years in, in it for the long haul, not going anywhere. I'm here till we, how many years later? How many, many, many years we gonna go? We gonna get here, we gonna be here until Lord tell us time for us to come go home. But we gonna be doing this thing always continuously because was no, with that thought of going our separate ways, that wasn't even there because that wasn't an option. I told that that wasn't going to be an option for us at all. So it's been a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful ride. I love her daily. Um, it's it's uh, now I'm speaking too much because I wanted to talk some. <laughs> <laughs> a couple in the because I got the question, I get going so far. So, okay, in reference to the couple that we went, what we felt we resonated with was, um, of course, Joseph and Mary. They, um, because the story of mine is kind of um, the commitment that you know go that you go through no matter good good times and bad times that you know and they also also trusted God despite it's despite the unknown and you know we I love their love can grow stronger through through our difficulties and that's truly what it's been uh, for us for all, for all these years together. Karen, to share. <laughs> he did a great job. I'm just going to echo one quick thing um, that has been key to our marriage is allowing us to be ourselves. I know one of the things um, when Minnie Emilio first met, he told me that he loved me despite, you know, um, I think in marriage, you want to be able to be your true self and not try for your spouse. to. You don't want your, your spouse to change you, try to change you. And he's never done that. He's accepted me for who I am. And I definitely accept him for who he is. We've learned to appreciate our differences in personality. So I think that means a lot in marriage, being able to accept your spouse for who they are, not try to change it. So. Awesome. Where are you guys from? Georgia. Okay. I'm, a, I'm originally from Trinidad, but Baltimore is where I kind of grew up. So Baltimore is home. So I'm looking forward to our, our, our couples fest in Maryland. It's been a while. <laughs> been a while. And I think you, I think you said you on the rollout method too, right? Because you said you ain't going nowhere. You, you better be. Yes, that's correct. <laughs> so he that's gave us all yes, that indeed. rollout. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Yes, indeed. So we have one more couple, the marriage investors. So they're going to give us their full name, where they're from. All these investments we can make. <laughs> hello, hello. Good evening, hello. everybody. I uh, just want to say God bless you all. Thank you to the Turners for having us in. To our, uh, we from Chicago. So mm -hmm. let me just say that. <laughs> so I just wanted to preface that when I say to our homies, our road dogs, the greens. <laughs> You know, we've been rolling for a while. And so uh, just so grateful for them and, and introducing us to this, just this amazing group. We are Joel and Naomi Mitchell. Uh, we are the marriage investors. We uh, chose, God gave us that name because we help couples get a greater return on their investment than I do. Oh. And so it has just been a blessing. We have been married now, uh, just turned 20. Mm -hmm. So we almost grown. <laughs> Uh, we turned 20 in March, March 29th. Uh, we have a, a beautiful set of uh, twin boys. They're 19 years old. We have a 16-year-old, soon to be 17-year-old daughter, uh, eight-year-old golden retriever named Max. You know, so we just, that's the whole family. But, uh, but we have been blessed to be here. And uh, just it's just great. We believe in marriage. Um, mm -hmm. We started out, and I love the rollout plan, but uh, <laughs> Naomi and I, we are the authors of a book called Shattered, How to Overcome a Broken Marriage. And oh. so we was on the rollout plan real heavy, real strong. <laughs> but then life came and hit us upside the head, and we was like, you know what? Do uh, it. <laughs> It's been one. Woo! But, uh, you roll yeah, we, we we're going to roll out. out in the opposite directions. <laughs> but thanks be unto God who uh, who kept us and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Yeah. And wow. so when we were at the point of rolling out in our own directions, God gave Naomi the scripture found over in Thessalonians. Um, Corinthians. In Corinthians. Mm -hmm. And it said, God reconciled the entire world to himself through Christ. Mm -hmm. 
And we said, well, surely if God can reconcile the whole world, yeah, there's hope for two. <laughs> you know, just two. Just two. I mean, if he can do the whole world, <laughs> come on, somebody. I mean, at least he could do two. Right, right. And so that placed us on the Ministry of Reconciliation. And now we can say, we're rolling out together. We going we we back in this thing. It's a rollout plan. You know, and so Dr. <laughs> Fetterman's, we we are here and and we're moving towards uh that. And so it's just a blessing. And I'll let Naomi share because I I uh we're both ministers, but I like to talk. So I'm a I'm gonna back up and let Naomi get stuck. Thank you, baby. I appreciate oh, that. You're welcome, baby. <laughs> But no, thank you all. I'm excited. Um, you know, Joel know how to, how to introduce and pump us up and get it started. I'm the introvert. He's the extrovert. No. So he, he gets things going for me. But the um, couple that we chose out of the Bible was also um, Priscilla and Aquila. And uh, <clears throat> for some of the same reasons that everyone else did, because we're both in ministry as well as in business uh, together, but also because they were very instrumental in the early church. And um, and the work that we do as the marriage investors, we call ourselves paracletes to pastors and churches because we walk alongside of them because they don't oftentimes have enough time to counsel or coach uh, married couples in the way in which they need to be um, in a sense of them having the time to do it and the couple's great need. And so that's the work that God has given us to do as the marriage investors. So we invest the time, we invest the training, we invest the energy, and we tell couples, once we're in it with you, we're in it. And once we make you marriage investors, then it's your role to go and invest in other couples. And so that's what Priscilla and Aquila did, you know, in the work that they did. They made some great investments, um, you know, during their work as tent makers, but also in their ministry alongside of Paul and the church. And so that is the couple that we chose. Awesome. awesome. Good. Just good. amazing. Good. Uh, and we thank you all. And we thank you all for rolling back in. I know that's yes, right. Lord. <laughs> God be praised. To God. Be praised. Listen. Listen, God is good. I'm telling yeah. you. Oh, he's able to do exceedingly yes. abundantly above, right? God yes. stretched mm. our capacity because mm. we didn't know we had it in us. We wanted right. to give up, but God said, Oh no, there's more. And you know, and we invited God in originally. And so God said, Well, since I'm this third strand, right, do what I've been called to do in this thing, you know, because when we wanted to give up, God wasn't ready to give up on us because he had purpose for us. And, and I'm going to be honest, it's somebody that's out there tonight that needed to hear that. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. God is somebody out there that needed to hear that. Amen. Um, I'm going to go back to the greens because I did we did you tell us who you chose at the Bible and where <laughs> you're from? <laughs> <laughs> oh, where we're from? Wow. OK, well, we live in Maryland, but I'm originally from North Carolina, Fayetteville. And I'm originally from Philadelphia. Wow. Yeah. So our couple in the Bible, normally we choose Priscilla and Aquila for the same reason, um, all the same reasons that everyone else did. We actually did research back in 2015 um, based on homework from our coach at the time to find a couple in the Bible that we identified with. But for this project, <laughs> we chose Jacob and Rachel. And um, the reason being is because you guys know that Jacob, he, he really loved Rachel and that's who he wanted to marry. And um, his father-in-law tricked him and married, he married Leah. So he had to wait 14 years to get the woman that he really loved. And I love when, uh, uh, I think it's, I forget, I think it's in Genesis where it says how he kissed her and wept when, you know, when they got together. So I thought that was just so beautiful. But reason why we chose them is because James and I met almost 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. And we did not stay, start dating as a couple until 20 something years later. Wow. And so my mother- and so I felt like Jacob. <laughs> <laughs> so you were doing your time. <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Uh, so, so he kissed you and you melt? <laughs> wait, wait. Yeah, yes, wait, she did. Really? She started crying. <laughs> <laughs> she started crying. No, seriously, honestly, the first time he kissed me, 
I tell people it's like how you used to see in those old movies when the guy kissed the girl on her back leg goes up. Oh. My back leg really went up, you guys. <laughs> and, and the funny oh, wow. thing is, I actually asked her, I said, what would you say if I asked you, could I kiss you? And she said, I would say, sure. Because we had been friends, we had for, been so friends long, for, for 20 years. I didn't even know if I could like him like that. You know what I mean? So uh -huh. he wasn't sure about kissing me. I wasn't sure about kissing him. But at that moment, I knew that it was OK. And the, and the funny thing is about that is that we met when I was in the military in North Carolina. And I used to go over her house and talk to her mother. And me and her mother used to sit on the couch and talk and talk and talk and talk for hours <laughs> almost every day. And she ended up telling Cynthia, I think he likes you. Uh oh. So many, no, no, many, many, many years later. later she right. never said that. She back never then. said that then, but many no. years later. So that's why we chose uh, Jacob and Rachel. Wow, that sounds like some amazing love. <laughs> well, I apologize. Our battery is low enough. I don't get the cord, the phone, the battery. The, the laptop is going to die. Okay. We, can, we, we, have, we have a moment. Talk. I'm like, I'm like, Joel, you know, I could talk. No, let me talk. <laughs> yeah, go ahead and talk, Mr. Green. Go ahead and talk. <laughs> no, but but that is the truth that, and I used to go to church with her mother. You know, I became good friends with her brother and she wasn't even in the picture. You know, we were uh -huh. just friends. And I used to take her to the grocery store, take it around her errands. So we were just friends and it was, and we, we actually lost contact for 11 years because we were previously married to other people. Uh -huh. So that's why we just remained friends and we lost contact for 11 years until I came back to the Maryland area for a class when I was living in uh, Cleveland, Ohio. And that's how we ended up reconnecting. You just came back for a class and you got all yes. of that, huh? Yeah. Wow. God, I tell y'all, we know God, how good God is and how amazing God is and how he He has a funny sense of humor. Yes, <laughs> and you be like, oh, all this long time, I did not even know that this was going to take place. So um, what I just thank you all for telling um, who my husband had to step away for a moment, but he'll be right back as well. But um, do anybody else want to say anything else about the person that you chose and why you chose? I know you all said a little bit, but if you want to say anything else, here's the opportunity before we go to the next question. Nobody? I think I chose <laughs> Lisa. Um, Lisa and I's meeting is, is kind of strange. I actually sat across from her on a Thanksgiving dinner and never once looked at her. Oh wow. Because I was I was I was checking somebody else out. <laughs> oh. and, but then as like you said, I tell people God has jokes. Um, and he loves to tell them. We were invited, I was invited to a black seminarian's uh, luncheon or dinner at Wesley Theological. And it was that night that I saw Lisa across the room uh -huh. that I was like, I want to get to know her. And the, the strange part about it was I was looking across the room at her and it was a lady in a white church hat who assumed that I was checking her out <laughs> because every time I moved my head, she moved her <laughs> head. And we went back and forth. And then finally, I just kind of stood up and took a look. And it was because of our pastor that we started dating. Um, our first date was at, she came to hear me preach at a local um, gospel rescue mission. That was our first official date. And it was from that moment that I was like, more than enough right now. Let me check her out. And I think I think it was that moment that I, I knew then I'm willing to invest my life with her. And it just it kept going from there. Um, I will tell you is that when we went through our first marriage counseling, she had said that she wanted to postpone the original wedding, which was for in December. I don't know, sisters, but I swole up like a toad. I, I was hot. I was some kind of hot because I felt, and my pastor at the time told me, she said postpone. She didn't say reject or delay or deny. 
Uh-huh. And so I had to, I had to learn to take back, you know, step back a moment and wait for this thing to happen. Um, and, and God brought the whole thing together in a blink. Um, can I ask a side note to the brothers? Uh-huh. When you were dating her and you first got married, what happened to your bachelor furniture? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Come on, fellas. Tell me my, what happened my, to your bachelor furniture. My, I know where my, this is going. I know where this is going. <laughs> my bachelor furniture wasn't wasn't a lot. Right. <laughs> so so it got it got um, improved quite a bit because what okay. I had the bachelor furniture. I didn't have a whole lot to get rid of. So, <laughs> oh, so, so you got an upgrade? I, I yeah, it was definitely an upgrade. It was upgrade. I can be honest. Mine got thrown in the trash straight out. <laughs> I love you, man. <laughs> I didn't I have you. any bachelor furniture. I moved straight from my mother's house into uh, living with my wife. <laughs> oh, so, so you didn't even deal with that. <laughs> yeah, no, I didn't have to deal with that. I, I'm like James. Mine ended up by the dumpster in the apartment complex. <laughs> it lasted all of 10 minutes out there. Mm. And I watched it going back into somebody else's house. But, but, um, but you know what, you know, Daryl, that's funny because not only did my furniture get thrown away, but she came in and looked in all my cabinets and said, all this processed food, we're throwing that away too. <laughs> yeah. see, see, I got Raton furniture and doilies. That's what I got out. Look, she Kurt, was, looking, she was looking on the boxes like, look at all this sodium in this. That's trash. Look at all this. It's not good for you. That's trash. So I got to say, it was an upgrade because he definitely increased my health. Oh, good, <laughs> good, good for you, good for you, Cynthia. <laughs> so, uh, Reverend Dr. Lisa says, I know where this is going. Yeah, I knew where this was going. <laughs> After all this time, he still has not forgotten about that black couch. <laughs> Give me, please. <laughs> That's right. That was the bachelor stuff, man. You know. That is too funny. Oh, <laughs> you, yeah. He said, and, you, know, and you I, missed I, the question. The question was, what happened to your furniture before you moved in with your... Uh, <laughs> He's the same. He's furniture. the same as Mr. Mr. Pete. He came yeah. from his mama house to my house. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. See, so he, he, he just had so a So he was cake. fine. He, he yeah, wasn't worried about no furniture. Yeah. He was trying to get me to get rid of some of my stuff. So, you know. still trying to make you get rid of some of her stuff. <laughs> 24 years later, she's still <laughs> oh, wow. um, One of the things that we um, we didn't share is that, and the reason for the furniture thing is uh, partly, uh, Rod and I uh, are high school sweethearts. Mm. So we started dating at 15. The third mm. grade thing is, is not the truth. We knew <laughs> each other in the third grade. We were on a field trip together, but there was no kissing. All right, I confess, I was trying to kiss her. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so we've been together for a long time. This has been an evolution. Because mm. we met when we were kids and, and continuously... Mm dated until we got married and that has its own dynamic within itself because we literally grew up together and then sometimes when you start out young like we did dating um god has to turn some things around because you met when you were so immature you met when you didn't really have a real flourishing relationship with god and and god did do that in our in our marriage he shifted a dynamic um that he didn't want in other words, uh, part of our journey is I had to get out of the driver's seat and he mm-hmm. had to get out of the passenger seat. Mm-hmm. And that was a hard turn to make. Mm. Um, and God used that to break us, um, mm. to put us in the right seat so that our children would see what the head looks like and mm. what the support mate looks like and not vice versa. But the last thing I wanted to say extra about um, to pick up <laughs> off of what Rod said in terms of Adam and Eve, I've always loved them because they're the beginning. Um, and they were in paradise um, with God until this very crafty enemy. And, and the word here is crafty. Yeah. Uh, showed up and began talking to 
Eve. And one of the things I used to question, well, where was Adam that this snake could be rapping to his wife, um, developing a relationship so that what? They became separated themselves from who? From God. Mm -hmm. And so we kind of parallel that because we became separated from one another. Yeah. Um, but just like you guys' testimony, um, by the grace of God, uh, we're here and we're still here and we're fighting. It's not because of us. It is because of our Heavenly Father. And we're so grateful to him. Man. Yes, yes. It's, it's funny you say that because Adam and Eve is one of my favorite Really, yeah. Things of the Bible because it, it tells so much about us in our relationships in life. And it was funny you said that because what you said you had to do in your relationship in Swiss places. You, if, if I'm a big person with, 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 with a man's place. And if Adam had been in his place, he had been doing what he was supposed to do, <laughs> we wouldn't have any problem today. You know. <laughs> so we had, we had to learn sometimes. You know, a man's place is a man's place. And we've gotten to a point in these days of time, we forget God is a big proponent of things being in order. He didn't set them in order for fun. <laughs> he did that for a purpose. That's right. You know, and that, that's, that's just amazing right. when you said that. It was like, wow. Mm -hmm. You know, that hit right on, that hit home. That mm -hmm. really hit home. Mm -hmm. Really did. Yeah. Yeah. So, the one thing that um, is imperative is she got to see what the home was supposed to look like. So I grew up with just me and my mom without a father in the house, right? So I didn't learn all the tools. I didn't get the tools out of the toolbox to put in my toolbox to be in the place where a man should be, right? So when we first bought the first home, my comment was, what you get me into? The second home, what you get me into? Everything, everything that she was, all the right things that she was leading us to, right? I came along. But because I didn't have the tools that I needed, right, I had to eventually learn them, right? Mm. I had to get in a space where um, my heavenly father had to replace my father because my father uh, had uh, 10 kids from six different illegal marriages. So my tools weren't, just weren't there. And I'm grateful to God that I have the tools now because um, uh, I believe, and I preached this the other day, if we please God, we please our spouse. If you please God, you please your children. If you please God, you're going to please everyone that you interact with. And, and to me, that's the bottom line, just pleasing God. Whereas we were looking to each other. You said something that was very important for people. You, you said something that was very important. You said willing, and you became willing to make that change with her. And that's important because a lot of times people are like, I don't want to change because, you know, this is me. This is how I am. This is how I was raised. But you was willing to work with her to make the change so you all can prosper and so you all can become who you are today. So that is very important. And I always say somebody out there needed to hear that. Amen. So uh, my husband is going to say who we chose out the Bible. We're from West Palm Beach, Florida, for those that don't know. <laughs> Bell, Bell Ridge, Florida, in West Palm Beach. Uh, we live in season Esther. Um, that's our couple. And um, we, we, we identify with them because of their work within their communities and their uplift. Um, I hadn't, I hadn't, I didn't know their story, you know, until we started the research and looking into it. And it, it just resonated with us because, you know, that's what we do. You know, we uplift, you know, uh, my wife is a big proponent of, of uplifting and building women and, and working within the community and working together. And it was just, it was just something that we could take, as I could take to, to look into them that, you know, resonated with us. Um, this is our first book together. Um, this is my first time ever being asked, you know, in the Bible, who do you, you know, because, <laughs> you know, as men, we, we look at men in the Bible, and who, and which who we can identify with, you know, but I, I've never took the time to really look at the Bible and say, what couple 
do I identify with, you know? Um, so it was something different for me, but, you know, my wife gave, put me to work. I ain't sat there, you know, I put me to work, you know, maybe do some things, do some writing. And once I got to writing, I got to writing a lot. And she was like, well, where am I going to put my stuff at? Well, you told me to write, you know. Most of y'all thought that, right? Most of you fellas thought that, like, what we gonna put our stuff in, right? I said the same thing. (laughs) Um, I want to share real quick why we decided to have you guys choose a couple in the Bible. I don't think we've ever talked about that. So, you know, a a lot of you guys work with couples. It's it's interesting that a lot of people in the book work with couples, and all of every single couple has a business. And so, you know, you know, when you're coaching people in almost any facet. A lot of times when you bring up the Bible, people just don't really want to hear what the word says. Let's just be honest. They don't want to hear it. Mm -hmm. And even if they are believers, they don't want to follow it verbatim. They think that everything in the Bible is just so far-fetched and just unobtainable and they they can't do it. And like it's so strict. And and, um, one thing that we did, we studied the Bible before we got married. We went through the Bible and pulled out every scripture we could find on marriage and married and love and relationship, husband, wife, bride, groom, all of that. We did all this research. And then we also researched couples in the Bible, like I said, way back in like 2015. But when we got ready to do this book, I went back and researched couples. And uh, what I know is that, or that we discovered even then, back then, everything that couples go through, it's in the Bible. We all know that everything everybody goes through in life is in the Bible. The word says there is nothing new under the sun. Mm. And I really want to show couples that what you're going through isn't new. There's somebody who's been through what you went through. And I wanted to show how even us who got great marriages, we went through something in our marriage and so did those couples in the Bible. And God still loved them. He still loves us. So he's still going to love them. That is and so he can powerful. help you through it. That is so, and you know what? When you say that, it, that's so meaningful because it's the truth. You know, and a lot of times people don't look at it like that, but that is the truth. Um, so I do have one, a question to kind of throw out at all of you all. Um, How, to you, how important is it to be around married couples? (laughs) Oh, anybody can answer. Go ahead, Lisa, you go first. I think that's an excellent question because like in the book, um, my, uh, well, the book, uh, the, the chapter is called Things That Surprise Me About Marriage. And actually, um, I was thinking that is actually one of the, the other things that has surprised me about marriage, that regardless of how long you have been married, you still need other couples because the relationship is constantly evolving. The, the love that you have is constantly evolving. And um, even though you may have started out as newlyweds, as newlyweds, it's, it's understandable that um, that, you know, you need a, a, a more experienced couple, but then even after you've been married for 10, 20 years, you still need to have another couple who has um, been through some of the things that you might be going through in this stage of marriage. Right. And I think it's also important because like we always says, well, like I always say, look at your fab five your favorite five couples that you hang around, that shows a description of how your marriage is. Mm -hmm. Plus you always need to have three types of uh, marriages, couples around you. One that pour into you, one Mm -hmm. on your level, and one you could pour into. Mm -hmm. And and that's a key because, you know, we, we feel that you always need to mentor, say younger couples or couples who aren't where you are yet, whether it's in your uh, walk with Christ or whether it's in where you are in your marriage, then you need the ones on your level that you can always talk to and relate to. And then you need ones to pour into you because you can't always pour out and have no one pour into you. Amen. So that's what we always say 
that those three level of couples in your Fab Five. Look at the, fa the five favorite couples you hang around. That shows how your marriage is. And mm -hmm. it usually it's, it's positive. You always have positive couples around you, you know, Christian couples around you. So that shows the description of how your marriage is usually. Awesome. It was someone else. Yeah, Philomena here. Um, I remember us having small groups and a lot of our small groups that we would have in our home uh, would be couples actually. And this was, we, you know, somewhat before we started doing our uh, marriage uh, ministry. And it was just so much energy um, that we would, you know, just be so receiving of these couples or would get from being around, you know, other couples like us. And me and my husband talk about today that we, most of our uh, friends are younger than us. And um, we simply enjoy being able to be mentors uh, to them. And every time that we turn around, they're telling someone else about us or they're, you know, bringing light or they're just, you know, saying great things about us as we say good things about them. And we are doing somewhat the same things. I've seen so many of them go into ministry, actually being appointed to be ministers in churches. And, um, we would be there for all of their inaugurations or whatever that they would go through, their birthday parties, making sure that we were there. We even had some of their kids' graduations. And it was just like, you know, since we don't have any children, it was just like, and we're the only ones in Ohio, we don't have any family here. But we connected through our church, through our pastor, with so many um, diverse groups. And that's what our ministry is about, too. And it's just like all of this, you know, this love that we receive. We go on picnics. We just have gone to weddings together. And it's just a blessing to have other people that's on the same level as you. Awesome. Great, great. Anyone else? Go ahead. Yeah, this is uh, Joel and Naomi again. And, and I we definitely concur and agree with what everyone said. Uh, and just another scripture is this, you know, iron sharpens iron, you know, and just being able to be around other couples. Uh, we had a former pastor and he said something that really kind of stuck with me. And he shared a story of how those four friends, you remember uh, when Jesus was in town and these four friends took their friend to see Jesus mm -hmm. and the room was so packed that they couldn't get in through the door. So they literally had to tear the roof off. <laughs> I was about to go somewhere with that, but I'm gonna back up. <laughs> but they literally <laughs> had to tear the roof off, <laughs> you know. And, uh, but he said those four friends and it always kind of stuck with us. He was like, in all of our lives, and I believe in our marriages, we need these four friends and we need someone who will first celebrate us. And this kind of runs in, in alignment with what James was saying, and other couple to celebrate us, you know, because there's so many people talking down about marriage and that's what Cynthia was saying. So other couples who will celebrate us, mm -hmm. then we need couples who will challenge us mm -hmm. and being around other married couples, they challenge you to continue to fight, continue to strive. You need couples who will correct you. <laughs> you know, it's enough bar stool theo theologians out there. You know, as many of them in the sea, don't worry about it. You know, you'll be all right. No, go back home. <laughs> you know, you need, that ain't right. That ain't right, tell your butt back you need home. Somebody to, yeah, you need somebody to correct you. But then the fourth and final one is you need someone to covenant with. And Naomi and I, we've been so blessed because we have a covenant brother and sister, somebody who will go down on their knees and pray. Yeah, Lord. Um, and bother God <laughs> on yes. your behalf. Yes. You know, and so just having other couples and being around other married couples. Now, you may not find all of those four characteristics in one couple. It may be four different couples that, that right. give you that energy and give you that life. Uh, but sometimes it's one. And, and they'll celebrate you, they'll challenge you, they'll correct you, but more importantly, they will covenant with, and we need people who will pray with us and for uh, us, and for us. Yeah. amen. And for us. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. I, I think the peaks. To, yeah, I just wanted to piggyback off of, everybody said everything that I was thinking about. One thing that just came up for me when you first answer, uh, asked the question was, 
uh, how important is it to be around other couples? And the word that came to my mind was uh, critical. Um, it's, it's critical for us to be around other couples. The scripture that I thought about was not forsaken the uh, fellowship and assembly of the brethren. And we have found energy in all that we have done uh, for couples and being a part of marriage ministry, et cetera. Um, and so it, it's very critical because the enemy does his best work in isolation when we cut ourselves off from other people and other uh, couples for the reasons that um, you guys stated. And so it's critical. Amen. 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 I, I have one for the men. Um, because as we all know, as men, you don't, you get out there in the world and you don't get a whole lot of positive talk when we, when we are congregating together about men and marriage. What advice would you guys give a young man that's just getting married or seeking to be married? What, what kind of advice would you give him? Um, I, I see you I, laughing, Mr. Pete. <laughs> one of the things, because I, I was thinking about myself as a young man um, and having no one to talk to. But one of the things that I've found over the years is communication is paramount. Now, I know that I wasn't always the best communicator. And I think if you lack communication in your relationship, you allow, that's one of the ways you allow the enemy to infiltrate. Because if she doesn't know what's on my mind or what I'm thinking of, and vice versa, then we can miss each other. And that was one of the things that we had going on is we were missing each other, right? But when you communicate, the possibilities of missing each other are a lot less, right? If I, if I let Michelle know what's on my mind, what's on my heart, the things that are bothering me, then she can also pour into me. She can pray with me. She can encourage me, right? And she can give me advice. And I can do the same for her. How about you, Mr. Emilio? What advice would you give a young man such as yourself? Um, I've, had, I've had the conversation a couple of times. And I, the number one thing I always talk about was just echoing. It was communication. And I always, always add, you have to be humble. Have to learn to humble yourself. Because, you know, when you come into a marriage, it's just you by yourself. When you decide you want to, bring someone else into your life and the marriage is, it surely becomes one. You have to be willing to realize that as a young person getting married, it's not just, okay, all right, great. Oh, it's all beds and roses. We're going to get married. We're going to get this big wedding. We have this house. We have this car. We can do all these great things. And you don't realize that, okay, it's some, you have to humble yourself because now you're bringing someone into your life and the way you may be thinking may have to change a little bit. You have to be, when you get told, have to be able to say, agree to disagree, communicate openly. And I say that because that was something that I struggle with. He struggle with now today sometimes as far as communication openly. Do a lot of thinking, a lot of thinking about on my, by myself <laughs> rather than communicate with my wife and let them know. And then I just say, okay, this is what I was thinking about. Or this is what I was doing. And I sharing with my partner who, who is here to help me these, figure something out and realize that, no, you know, you have to do this by yourself. It don't have to be that difficult. You can really share your thoughts and with, your, with her. And so she can help you do that. So I always, and you know, communication and be able to humble yourself. All right, Mr. Darrell. I know you got something good for me. Um, for me, it's if I were to tell a young man who is entering into marriage, um, two things really. One, you don't necessarily have to have the answer right now. Mm -hmm. Um, because that's a part of growth. To be able to say to your spouse, I don't have the answer for what we're going through, but I'm willing to go seek the answer with you. Um, that's, to me, that's the important, that's the first thing. Because a lot of times what we don't recognize is when we 
when we initially got married, the whole thing was brand new. Every every spot we looked at had a shine on it. And it was gleaming and it looked good and it looked inviting and all those things. But as the marriage goes on, it's not that it loses its shine. It's, it's, it's really us who look at it and realize it's changing. It's not what it was. You know, if we can be honest and we're all grown folks, um, first five years of marriage is sex three times a night if you can, if you can hang. <laughs> um, the whole world sparkles, she sparkles, you sparkle, you know, all that. Keep them laughing. <laughs> but, you know, I'm just being real. You know, we all dance around it. But, you know, yeah. I mean, you know, you say Adam and Eve, they walked around naked, you know. So I don't know what Adam's issue was with why he wasn't looking at Eve that day. <laughs> um, uh, it was right there. Jacob and Rachel, um, I'm sorry, but Jacob saw her at the well, fell in love right there and then went through a busted marriage or an arranged marriage to get to the marriage that he wanted. Um, to me, sometimes, and that's, some people say, well, that's kind of raw. Joseph and Mary, I'm pregnant. By who? By God. Are you serious? Are you really serious? You just got, you're telling, why didn't you get pregnant by, by, by it, it bells above down the street or somebody? But you told me you got pregnant by God, you know? And it's a, everybody, we gloss over the reality of those statements, um, you know, and all of those tell me that it takes work. And if you're willing to put in the work, you know, um, it's not going to look good. You know, I'm, my ministry now, I coach youth football and I coach and, and I, I'm pretty good at what I do, but now I'm being entrusted to give direction to a 10 year old to go out there and execute. It's not gonna look good. And I took that from my marriage because when we first started out, everything first five years was great. We had a chance to go dates, you know, and everything else. But then when the babies came, whole world changed as a shift, you know, and then when the babies are growing up, you know, I don't know about you brothers, but I got accustomed to them being five and turned around and they were nine. And I was like, wait, this, this stuff is moving too fast. But if it was not for me and my wife being able to talk, communicate, and understand that this thing is constantly changing, constantly requiring work, um, even when we go out on a date now, we, we sit for five minutes, don't say anything. Because we know even at 25 years, guess what? We'll talk about the kids. Um, and for those who, who had kids and don't have kids, this is what... This is what that young guy, that young guy and that young lady are gonna go through. And if you can't help them through that process and understand that, that the answers ain't gonna come on every night and it's not gonna make sense. And yeah, you're gonna, you, you're, gonna, you're gonna mess up your money more than you make it right, but you gotta figure out a way. And you, at the end of the day, you say, are we married or are we not? Um, when he makes mistakes, you know, She's got to be able to forgive it. If he if she makes mistakes, he's got to be able to forgive her. It's it's a growing process. And if you're not willing to grow together, then that's the challenge. That's the rep recipe for disaster. Because once one stops growing, the other one continues to grow. Then you get jealous and say, well, she's doing this and that and the third, and I'm doing nothing. And she can honestly say, well, you sat there and just stayed by the side of the road. Um, and that's, that's that, but that's way down the road, but for the young man, you can't figure it all out today. This is, this is a one step at a time journey, you know, and you just happen to have the one that you thought was the best, the brightest, the best looking, the one who got your eye and is keeping your eye. You got her on your side. So that's, that's my advice to the young guy, you know, to us old guys. You should have been paying attention to them lessons that were that were being laid out years ago. And if you weren't, you got work to do. And it's gonna be rough. You know, but don't worry, God's got you. He's like like the young lady said, he's the third strand in the whole thing. And if you're not willing to lean on him, you're not gonna figure it out on your own. You know. Um, but you know, to me, it's marriage is a journey. 
it's a journey of some people say of becoming one because now we're 25 years in um she answers my sentences she finishes them now and it's scary sometimes <laughs> walk in walk in and say you know honey i'm thinking oh yeah i was thinking about the same thing and it's like wait 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 you know can i at least get one thought out of my head before you finish it you know mm -hmm. But that's the that's the beauty of being together and understanding each other, you know. Because um, to me, when I when I hear couples say, "I have no idea what's on his mind," you're not talking. That's to me. Right. I say that honestly. You're not talking. Maybe oh, we're talking. Maybe you're talking at him or he's talking at you, but you're not talking. You know. Um, a lot of times we get into that mode. I hear people, and I tell people honestly, especially the singles, you know, um, because where we did ministry, we were the only married couple in the church when we first started. And we were like, God, you know, you tell jokes, but what is this thing? You know? This was really funny, huh? Yeah, it was like, oh, you're just going for a belly laugh now, aren't you? <laughs> but yet what we found were that couples were watching, even though they were shacking, they were watching us to see how we were moving through this thing, you know? And yeah, we had some who came, came for counseling, for marriage counseling with us. We had some who said, oh, this is too hard. I'm gonna go get married on the side, you know? Um, we had some who said, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna keep on living together. Can't make those decisions for you. But I, can, but I can honestly say we lived our lives out in front of them, you know? And I think for, marriage for especially couples married couples that's what we sometimes don't do is we don't live our lives out in front of people so that they can they don't have to see everything you know right. let's let's be honest you know everything is not for everybody you know and what goes in my, my household should not be discussed with someone else but that which i choose to show you i i cho i made that choice wow. yeah you're gonna make it hard for somebody to follow you yeah you know, uh, yeah. I, I, I'm gonna have people follow you. You, you, you know, gave me a sermon on it. Hey, any one of y'all want to follow that? <laughs> so, the floor is open if you want to. No, no. I, I, I tell, I'm, I'll tell you honestly. I'm just an old dude who is like um, the brother from Trinidad. This is my second time around. Everything I do in this one, oh, I sorry. didn't do in the first one. So when people say, how do you make this one work? I have, I have my own personal history lesson. Don't do what you did in the first one <laughs> at all costs. <laughs> just don't do it. You know, and don't there, do you're so that. right. That's why we picked Jacob and Rachel, because as you said, that first one wasn't right for him to get to the next one. And that's how I felt, because this yeah. is our second one also, which I don't mm -hmm. say our second marriage. I say this is our final marriage. Yeah. But <laughs> I screwed up in the first one, you know, Okay, yeah. I, I know it takes two, but I know I wasn't right. And I did it wrong to make sure this one was right. But as right. you said, uh, Mr. Turner, about young guys, everyone talked about communication, but I would say, make sure you listen, especially effective yeah. listening. Yes. Sometimes they don't want you to try, the women, the wife don't want you to try to solve all the problems. They just want you to listen. Yeah. You know, and you need to listen to make sure that if they need help, if they're crying out, you know, they might not come out and say, you know, they need help. They may say it in a, a, a story or a sentence or something that, look, I'm crying out for help, but you need to make sure you listen to what they're saying. Mm -hmm. Effective listening, that is the key. Right. And also, I always say that you need to make sure your wife feels secure. Women want security. And if you can make them feel secure physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually, you could get anything you want, but you need to make sure they feel secure in all those areas. Amen. Now you said a mouthful of that. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. <laughs> I, I mean, we'll be remiss. We, we, we got one more left. You gotta give us some. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go against the grain a little bit. Go ahead. Uh, because I, I concur with everything that our brothers have said. And one of the things that I would like to just share with younger brothers now is we're living in this age of just toxic masculinity, 
you know, we're living in these days where they're trying to just, you know, discover what it means to be a man and what it mm -hmm. means to be a man in this community and, and in this day and time. What we've been learning in the work that we've been doing, and, and it's hard for brothers, and let me just preface it by saying it's hard for brothers to be able to tap into their emotional side. But we have been learning, and right now it's it's a big crazy emotional intelligence. It's a big word and all of that. And and it's hard for a lot of brothers because a lot of brothers, we've been taught from the womb, men don't cry. Uh, uh man up, uh, uh uh stand up straight, you know, get yourself together. And then when our wives are looking for that emotional connection, it's very difficult for brothers to be able to connect with them on an emotional level. And so I would say to brothers, understanding now the importance of being able to tap into that emotional uh, space in your life. And it really kind of goes in, in conjunction with what James was saying, because when we can tap in emotionally and we can listen, you know, empathy goes a big way to be able to put ourselves in our wives' shoes and, and to be able to understand, yes, I am the man, but God has given me this beautiful wife to walk alongside this life with me. And that was one of my biggest challenges and hurdles because, you know, the church, especially many of us are from the church and we say men are to lead, priest, protector, provider. And then we have these beautiful wives that God has given us who are brilliant, who are intelligent. But because we are so focused on our masculinity, James, we don't listen. And so a lot of the things, and, and this is no Jerry Maguire type of you complete me thing, but you know, our wives and our spouses, we compliment each other. And so the things that I was lacking, Naomi had it in spades, had I only listened. You know, if I was able to move my masculinity and you go, you know, Naomi. out of the way, <laughs> You know what I'm saying? And 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 when I when I when God showed Naomi to me, I saw all of those things. But then when we got married, I started listening to men, you lead, you lead, you lead. Then I was not giving her the the respect for the gifts that she was bringing into the relationship. And so God had to show me, no, I, I placed you two together because she has those strengths. She has those capabilities. She has that capacity. And so I would say to the young brothers, you know, God has given us this beautiful wife, you know, and, and yes, we will obtain favor, not because she's a thing, but our marriage is the thing and we can obtain favor if we are able to, to just really allow God and our wives to show up and be their authentic selves and we can respect and honor that and that was one of my biggest challenges getting out the way <laughs> you know and allowing my wife and and i think it's through that emotional intelligence being able to tap into that being able to be aware to be attentive affectionate to be tapped in because at the end of the day you just want to be with somebody who gets you yes yeah. yes you know what joe that's so good because you know, the women want us, the wife wants us. They want to see our vulnerability, our vulnerable side. So we shouldn't be afraid of that. And, and let me just add on. I know in my first marriage, I wasn't that. And I was one of the ones that I would tell young people also, don't be afraid to go get counseling, to go get coaching, to go get help. Yeah. I was one of them ones. I ain't going to no strings and telling my business. <laughs> that, that was me. That Amen. Was me. <laughs> and you know the, the say that I know that I usually do an hour but because we have so many on here and the juice that's flowing the information that's going out that was my next question as far as uh, what do you think about marriage counseling yeah it, it saved our relationship <laughs> it, it, I mean and so Naomi and I we, we're both seminarians and and uh, we received our doctors in ministry. I did mine in um, pastoral care and counseling. And one of the things is in our communities, especially. Yes. So my, my thesis is it's more than just the blues, reshaping the biblical and theological understanding of depression in the black community. And one of the biggest things is the stigma that's yes. associated 
with any kind of counseling, if it's marriage counseling, I mean, whatever it is. And since I'm in this space, I was the first one that said I didn't need it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I am a counselor. What you talking about? <laughs> but being able to humble myself and, and then being able to see the work that Naomi was doing. And so what I would say to couples is if you have a spouse that's like me and didn't want to go to all of the wives, you go, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. get started. Even if he doesn't want to go, you start. Because what happened was I saw Naomi going and she was getting, she was becoming healed and she was getting stronger. And I started saying, oh my God, what is going on <laughs> over there? I better get some of this my own self. Yeah, Cause she about to go. And so, uh, <laughs> But in all honesty, I, we we believe that healthy individuals create healthy relationships, healthy relationships create healthy families, and healthy families build strong communities for the kingdom. And it's all about wholeness. It's our mental health, our spiritual health, emotional health, and yes, like our brother said, we didn't have the tools. Mm -hmm. We loved each other, but uh, love wasn't enough. We needed some tools in our toolbox. And I'm going to stop because you know I can go. I get excited about this. <laughs> you get excited. Hey, but we love it. You're giving them the answer because it's not just in your area that can hear this message. It's from all over that can hear this message. And they really need to, to know. And the good part about it is with you being a counselor and being a theologian and having that education, telling people, even though I have it, guess what? I still need. Absolutely. To go in and get my and get get my oil check. Yeah, you know, I, need to go, I need to go in and make sure the engine running properly. Yes, Lord. My yeah. brother always say, you know, you take a car in every five thousand miles, get the oil change. Why you don't take relationship in and get the oil change? Hello. Get checked out. <laughs> you know, it ain't got to be broke, but make sure it don't break. Yeah, yeah that's right. And I think it's important too because you know one of the things that couples think is that because we have to have a frame of reference where we get all of the th our thoughts from our practices. And so it's like the third party can help you see that it's not just one way, you know, cause most time it's like this my way, he doing it wrong. And I don't know what his problem is, his family problem either, you know? And it's like, well, no, just because we do it differently does not right. make your way right and his way wrong. And right. so one of the things we talk about and Joe mentioned earlier is empathy. You know, we talk about the six and the nine. So if we're facing each other and there's a six on the ground from uh, my perspective and I'm looking at it and I tell you all day, it's a six, but Joel is looking at it and it's a nine from his side. And we can argue back and forth all day. And so if we have empathy, we go on the other person's side, take a look at how they're looking at it, their perspective, their viewpoint. Then we can say, oh, I can see why you see it that way. But if we stay on opposite sides and continue to argue our point, we'll never ever be able to empathize with the other person. And so just because it's different does not make it wrong or right. Mm -hmm. yeah, that is so true. And every couple don't have all the answers. Sometimes you need a mediator to help you work through some of the issues you're having because we don't have all the answers. And you need a third party to maybe be like the, uh, the moderator, the mediator in what you're going through. You know, with so many of the couples that we've coached and we do counseling in our church, so many of them are like, gosh, we wish we'd done this sooner. Or man, this stuff really works. I never thought I would be getting, I would, you know, be getting counseling or coaching. Or my mother always told me black folks don't get counseling, <laughs> you know. We, we, we've heard it all oh, yep. and everybody finds that just having someone to talk to, if people would think of counseling and coaching, especially coaching, coaching is a little different from counseling and coaching. We're there to listen to you and help you work through your stuff. Mm -hmm. So everybody needs someone to talk to. Mm -hmm. And sometimes your best friend ain't it. Let's just be real. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so many people realize that once they get it, they are so thankful, so glad that they did, and they see the difference. So we want to encourage the couples out there, don't be afraid to get counseling or coaching. Think of it as just talking to someone who understand, who, who wants to understand you and who wants to listen to what you have to say 
and what your spouse has to say right. and help the two of you yeah. come together. You need to yes. break that uh, that uh, legacy of where whatever is going on in your house, it stays in your <laughs> yes. house. Don't be yes. telling no stranger my business. Oh, yeah, yeah. we yes. all heard it. <laughs> and it's so, I'm so glad you said that, Cynthia, because statistics show most couples wait about seven years yeah. yep. before they even go to counseling. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then by that time, because Naomi and I, when we had the breakdown in our relationship, it happened in year eight. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, and, and the cracks were there. It was crumbling. And had we gone sooner, mm -hmm. we probably would not have been like, you know, deuces, peace <laughs> out. Right. But we wait so long before we go. Yeah. And then many people, when you do go to counseling, because that is the first step but then you have yep. to go because counseling still is not a, a silver bullet it's not a right. bullet you know it's still a process yeah but yep. people wait so long before they go and then they go to one session and it's like oh y'all ain't help me <laughs> you gotta say it you, you gotta <laughs> say it that like, is the truth this has been building that up over so seven years that and is you go so true <laughs> And then you're like, oh, that didn't work. Hey, hey, Joel, that is so good because I got a text from a, a couple who reached out to us for coaching, right? And yeah. I sent her the contract and, you know, they have to sign a three-month contract. She mm -hmm. says, well, what if we decide to quit before the three months is up? We just don't want to do it anymore. I said, well, then I don't think you should sign the contract because we That's don't right. want to coach couples who aren't willing to put in a, a, a commitment to what they're signing their name on. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we do the same thing because a lot of times they will quit after the first or so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You already know that because it's hard work. It's work. it is hard work, right? You know? And so we made it like that as well, so that you know you all have to commit to the process. Yeah, Just trust right. The process, you know. And, and it's funny because my line is, "It's supposed to be hard because if it was easy, everyone would do everyone it. Everyone would do it. That's right. <laughs> there you go." <laughs> Exactly. I was thinking that same thing and, uh, as you were talking. I was thinking about with the first, I was thinking about how God says there's wisdom in what the multitude of, of counsel, right? That's so, right. Um, that's right. God, it, it, God is saying, get counseling. Um, right. So I think like you guys have, all, we've all been saying is that we fight that based on the, the stigma. I think another thing that comes up for us who are, um, exhorters or uh or counselors or coaches or ministers or pastors or preachers sometimes for us it's hard yes yeah, as you get stuck in a mode of i'm constantly pouring out and giving to others mm -hmm. and you, it, it took god to say to me <clears throat> go get counseling right. for yeah. yourself that's right. Um, that and I and I had to, um, but then I think about too, just listening to everybody, particularly Cindy, uh, Cynthia just now, is a lot of times when people go, like Rod said, to get the tools, mm -hmm. right? Because counseling, coaching can give us tools. The That's word right. of God gives us tools. A lot of yeah. people are afraid of the word of God because they don't think it's practical. Mm -hmm. But we serve a God who can yeah. give us practical tips and skills and tools. We just have to do what? Not yeah. just be hearers of the word, but we have to do the do word. That's Faith right. without works is what? It's dead. Yeah, so there's work for us to do, right? So when we go to these sessions, uh, we get these tools and we get these tips, but then we don't apply them. Right. Yes. It's like, aha. Uh -huh. And so that's what I hear all of us saying today is it's you have this is work. Yeah. It's yeah. Not, it didn't take, it wasn't built overnight. It's not going to be repaired or restored overnight. It is a process. And a lot yeah. of people, the reason why they quit counseling after a certain amount of time or coaching, <clears throat> they don't want to put in the work. It's because yeah. that flesh yes, is yeah. strong. It, it's strong and it's still, um, it's alive and, and, and well and not going anywhere. And so I, that's why I like platforms like this, where we're not afraid to share our story right we're not mm -hmm. afraid to say we almost didn't make it right because right. yes we let the enemy in but then we're not afraid to say hey this is what we had to do right michelle had to get up out the driver's seat did she like yeah. doing that no <laughs> <laughs> you no know, i was kind of i was kind of happy until god said nope get up 
Yeah. <laughs> I don't even think he was happy. So then, <laughs> and then it, it does take the act of God. Yeah. To understand this is the way I created and designed marriage. Yeah. This is where peace is going to be. Um, and the head of every man is God. Nice. Amen. <laughs> um, and so we do have to learn it. So that's why I like platforms like this and connecting with other couples. And that's why it's important because I need to hear that you struggle too. Yeah. yeah, right. I need to hear that Rod needs to hear it. Mm -hmm. Because I agree with the brother that talked about society. It's sad what society does to men. Mm -hmm. Because if Jesus could we, could we, why can't you guys? Right. But I love yeah. that my husband is getting it. Yeah. When he talked about the communication, I love it. Right. Because sometimes to James point, I just need you to hear me. Yeah. You don't have to fix it because I know you don't know the answer. God has it. Mm -hmm. And I'm so glad that you get that you have to go to God now. Because yeah. he has right. your instructions. <laughs> so I, I love that. And, I, and the last thing I'm going to say is I loved listening to all of the men and your differences. Mm hmm of what you would tell a young man because you're all different right and Remember your that. needs are different and guess who knows that god knows that and that's what's powerful about an anthology because someone will learn from me and rod's story yeah the next person will learn from the greens the next person will learn from the turners etc mm -hmm. and so that is what's powerful about an anthology when everybody can see and read about how God is working in everyone's marriage. Yeah. Right. In different Amen. ways. Amen. So this is just a, a blessing. Thank you. And, and one thing that I want to say also is we have to remember too that effective communication, communicating is effective listening as well. Yeah. yeah. So when we're communicating, we're not just talking, but we're also listening. So it's, it, it all folds into communication. Yeah. Amen. I just want to add this as a licensed counselor and a marriage coach. One of the things that I help couples to do on the front end is to hold up the mirror and look at yourself. Because yeah. oftentimes when couples come to counseling, they think that if their partner or their spouse will only change, then wow. things would get better. But yeah. I always want them to start out with hold up the mirror and look at yourself first. How are you showing up in the marriage and what do you need to do to contribute positiveness to the marriage? So that's where I start. And I may lose people with that starting out that way, but <laughs> we got to look at ourselves first. That was my journey. This is my second marriage. And that first marriage, I didn't show up the best, the best sharing, right? So I had to hold up that mirror, put some work in and work on myself, do some personal development. So when I met Emilio, his queen, I was ready. Right? Because I had to put the work in. So yeah. we have to hold up that mirror on the front end when we come to counseling, look at ourselves and see how we're showing up in the marriage. I just wanted to add that little bit. That was a good that was a great addition because people always bring the other person to counseling. Right. right. Just bring them, <laughs> you know, drag them in like they brought the woman. Fix them. Right. Like they brought the woman who committed adultery and Jesus made them drop all of their rocks and was like, um, he without sin, let them cast the first stone. Stone, you mm. know. And so that's a great ad because oftentimes we is. come and we drag our spouse in and it's like, did you hit him? What did you hear what they, you know, <laughs> but what about you? You know, <laughs> that was good. Thank you. Yeah. And I yeah. think. It was your husband that was talking about, I want to piggyback on something he said earlier, and I just lost my train of thought. <laughs> wow. It's okay. It just went away. Uh, It'll come back. You, it, it, you have something? Yeah. I said I just oh, lost it. Oh. Okay. Go ahead, Reverend Lisa. Okay. Reverend Dr. Right, yeah. Lisa. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I concur with um, so much of what um, everyone has said. And um, actually, the reason why I started my business, Love with Finesse, is because I was tired of seeing people secretly struggling with faith and mental health. Um, and uh, it is just such a blessing that God has uh, shown me and introduced me to people who are struggling, who were secretly struggling. And I was in a position where I couldn't where I, I couldn't do enough to help. And so that's why I'm doing what I'm doing now. And I'm so glad that, um, that I've had the opportunity to 
um, to, to receive counseling, even in the, the counselor has received counseling, you know, um, that the helper, uh, the, the, the caregiver needs uh, counseling also. And I, I'm so glad that we're talking about this because it is important to erase this stigma about mental health, especially with people of faith. It's not like you can you can still um, you can still love Jesus and 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 ha and have a therapist too. It's okay. Um, and I, I I'm just um, glad that we had this platform where we can actually talk about that and to um, uh, to remember that um, we're we're not perfect. Right. You know, nobody's marriage is perfect. No. Um, and we're not perfect, and we all need some help sometimes. And it's okay to admit that. It is perfectly okay to admit that. And um, even for, for me, what I do is I help people to process their thoughts and their feelings, because a lot of times we're so focused on everybody else. And we're not really thinking, you know, uh, the, the brother was talking about emotional intelligence. We're not always aware of when we're angry, uh -huh. you know, because anger looks differently. Sometimes it's just, just being annoyed. Sometimes it's being irritated. We don't really think about, oh, I'm angry about this. I didn't realize that. But until that's what um, counseling mm -hmm. and therapy helps me. Well, I've, I've been helping other people to do that and it's helped me to be able to do that. So then, and that way I can better, uh, I can be a better support to my husband <clears throat> and, um, ha and to be able to enjoy the other relationships that I have with my children and with everybody that I work with and everything else. Well, this has been so amazing. And I, it was just so lovely to have you all. And I know right now we know where we can go when we need some help. <laughs> we, we all, is, so I'm going to have everybody information. So I just want to say thank you all so much for the opportunity for us to interview you. But we don't go until we ask you all, what do you have going on in your city or activities? And I know um, Cynthia and James will talk about the couple fest. I want them to talk about the couple fest and I want them to talk about purchasing our book. <laughs> yes. So we'll, yes. We'll let them go last. Yeah, yeah. we'll let you all go last. Yeah. So everybody else, go ahead and tell us what you have going we'll on. Um, we'll start with the peaks. Sorry, we were on mute. <laughs> um, what do we have going on? Um, we want to. We actually just started talking. Um, last night we went to dinner. And we're talking about uh, reigniting an initiative that um, we used to do, which was called Marriages for Christ. And that's where actually we had uh, Cynthia and James on. And we were talking about having you guys on um, Marriages for Christ. It was a prayer call uh, mm -hmm. that husbands and wives would share um, independently, like wives would share with wives, husbands with husbands. And then we would pray um, because we definitely believe uh, prayer is necessary. Um, to help marriages. Um, we need God, uh, like the young lady said, as the third uh, strand in our marriages. And we need to pray for those things. And so we need to do it on um, a wide scale. And so we have people across the country right. who, uh, dial in and listen to this. So we're thinking about making it a, a Zoom uh, call now. Uh, he, uh, you want to talk about uh, um, on our anniversary, church anniversary, uh, Rod is going to be doing another play coming up um, and using yeah. his plays are <laughs> Christian um, plays. And so we'll get that information out to you guys when that, awesome. um, yeah, when that, that comes up. Um, that's probably it. We, we still counsel couples. I uh, do uh, coaching. Um, I have the Purple Couch show. I'll have to get that out to you guys too. I think I shared with you that that uh, deals a lot with domestic violence. Um, mm -hmm. We have a conference coming up in October. And so I'll share uh, that. And I'm thinking about the topic is going to be stand up and stop the silence. Someone talked about how we suffer in our homes uh, mm -hmm. silently. Uh, domestic violence, definitely that happens. Mm -hmm. um, victims are completely remaining silent. And it's not just about uh, physical violence, because a lot of right. people think I'm not in a domestic violence because I'm not hitting my wife or, right. or husband because women can be too, but um, emotional abuse yeah. is right. 
it's a it's a real thing. Mm -hmm. And so um, the topic is going to be stand up and stop the silence, uh, God's intervention. Amen. Uh, so many years prior, I've had the professionals um, talk about if uh, from an advocate standpoint, what is domestic violence? But um, this year, the forefront is going to be God because God has made a way of escape. Yeah. Amen. And so we need to let victims know and abusers know because God's not, you know, God right. is for the restoration of an abuser as well. Yeah. Um, uh, not just the victim, but God has a way of escape. And so we want to let people know that it's presenting the, the word of God in a practical way that people can receive it, Amen. Um, that people can receive it and uh, change their situation, mm -hmm. if not uh, be removed from their, right. their situation. Right. So that's it for the piece. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. The mistress. <laughs> and the marriage investors yes you can catch us uh that is our social media handle on all of our channels our facebook group and everything um instagram twitter uh you can find us at the marriage investors uh we have a weekly married couples prayer call and we are well i guess it's good for you all on the east coast because it's 6 30 but for those of us <laughs> central standard time we're up every wednesday morning at 5 30. we have been praying with couples for about the past six years or so mm -hmm. and so we do that we invite you all to come in and pray with us uh we believe that in every relationship as well as in life we may not go through the same thing but we all go through something that's right. And it's a blessing to have a community that can support you. Uh, we're also going to be kicking off our uh, podcast and we will, you can find that information on our Facebook page as well. And then we do couples uh, coaching. And so you can visit us at our website, www.themarriageinvestors.com. And like I said, we, we know as, as uh, Brother Turner said, people invest in everything. They invest in their cars, they invest in their in their education, their mm -hmm. homes, but people rarely invest in their marriages. Mm -hmm. And we wanna show people that you can get a greater return on your investment, and I do. And so and so that's us, that's what we do, baby. Mm, that's it. No, okay. So yeah, and we look forward to connecting with you all. This has been a, a, just a pleasure and an honor for us to be able to connect. So thank you all so much. Amen. You are so welcome. And if you can go back to the page and actually put in your prayer line number, that okay. would be that would be helpful. Yeah, we'll definitely do that. Absolutely. Uh, all right. Uh, is it Dr. Reverend Johnson? <coughs> Ms. Johnson up there? I I was on mute. <laughs> yes. Um, well, um, you can just call us the Johnsons and definitely we do brilliant mind marriages and relationships. And so yesterday we was at a very great um, small leaders uh, workshop and um, we've been doing small uh, groups for probably over 13 years now. So we're kind of like re um, training for it uh, because of my studies. I was in school for a number of years. So uh, we did uh, take some time off to um, do uh, other things at that time, but we're going to start uh, with our marriage and relationship group uh, probably uh, this fall or early spring. So uh, we're going through our training with our uh, our leadership at our church. Uh, we have an on staff, um, uh, clinical staff, uh, counselors, probably about eight of them, and we work with them also. Um, we're going to be collaborating, of course, with Cynthia and inviting our uh, Brilliant Mind uh, Marriage and Relationship group uh, to uh, the conference. We normally have our conference in October. Um, it's normally Sweetest Day weekend. So we have been doing that for eight years and we probably will, um, we're gonna be working, um, trying to get our couples to go there. Also our relationship roadshow. Uh, we didn't do it this summer because we celebrated our 21st, as you probably heard in Rome, Italy this year. My husband set the whole thing up, up and um, we were able to go celebrate 21. So uh, as some of you are saying, oh, yes, I made that year of 21, you know how 21 you get a chance to do almost anything and so we did so <laughs> so 
so, so nice. I was so glad that he done it. He set it up, right? So our relationship road shows, basically, we um, get a limousine and we probably invite probably about 20 couples or so, and we all get into this limousine, but we hadn't been able to do it uh, with COVID. And we're still thinking about doing it this fall. And that's where we go and we go to restaurants. We go to all these different, um, you know, five-star restaurants. Um, restaurants and we do communication because we know that statistically and according to research the number one reason which we all have been talking about tonight is communication just like real estate it has to do with location 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 communication 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 and so we have ongoing uh, relationship advisement counseling going around uh, going on year round and especially we like to work with the newlyweds couples that are uh, just setting out because we know that when we got we didn't go through that much counseling like everybody talked about because we was hiding things because just like hidden figures there's a lot of hidden couples they don't want to let you know everything and then you get them one-on-one -on -one and you start finding out well this one's doing that and they should be working together on those things so we help them to see how that they should work together awesome awesome i like the idea of the what the the road show yeah i mean yeah. we don't call it the road show but you know we all go we we have couples that go out to eat but never heard of the road show awesome um nice. the fittermans the fittermans well um um uh, we have a um, book launch um, party that's coming up on August, Sunday, August 28th at New Vision Fellowship Church. Um, it's a church where we are um, um, assisting in. And um, so um, we're getting our church support to help with, um, uh, with the pre-sales with, um, and we'll, we'll have a, um, uh, a few giveaways and some, play, um, some couples games. Uh, with the ones who are there. So we're excited about that. And um, my company, Love with Finesse, um, is planning a, uh, a workshop for, um, well, it's a program um, called Freedom and Forgiveness. That's coming up in October. Awesome. Awesome. Um, the Museum of Sharon. Hi, did you say Emilio and Sharon? Yes, yes, we did. Okay. Um, so my business is Oasis of Serenity Counseling and Consulting. The website is oasisofserenity.net. And my husband has graciously agreed to join me. Um, mm -hmm. He's a, we, We're both certified in preparing and rich. And so we do a coaching program for couples called Coaching uh, Cultivating Marriage. And then I am launching a program. It's Oasis Infidelity Recovery Coaching Program. It's A Plus Marriage. And it's a 15 week coaching program to help Christian couples who've experienced infidelity and have decided to stay to fight for their marriage to help them be able to recover and heal from uh, the trauma of infidelity. That is awesome. Mm -hmm. That is awesome. Anything else? That's it, Sharon? That's, that's it. Yes, that's yeah. it. <laughs> okay. okay. All right. well, my thought did come back, guys. My thought that I lost early, it came back. And it, I was just echoing off of the marriage investors. It was that it's not our responsibility to fix the marriage. That's the responsibility of the couple. And when I meet with them on the front end for their consultation, I let them know that. I don't have any pixie dust or magical powers. I'm here to show up, be your cheerleader, give you the information, be like your guide to help you. But the success of your marriage depends upon you and how hard you're willing to work. So I agree with everybody. It's not our responsibility to fix anyone's marriage. We're just there to help and to guide and provide the information that they need. That's it. Amen. Okay, the J James and Cynthia Green. The famous, the famous Greens. <laughs> All right, everybody. This has been so much fun and so exciting. I'm so happy that all of you are here. This is why we have our two week meetings so that we can all get to know each other and share and grow together and support one another. So um, we are James and Cynthia Green. We are the founders of Marriage Built to Last and we are your marriage and relationship visionary strategists where we help busy professional couples develop vision 
and create goals for their own specific marriage that will help them create oneness and propel them into the successful, happy and prosperous marriage that they truly desire. And so we are just excited about all that we're doing in this project. On this book, we have 15 amazing couples who are sharing their stories just like we did tonight to help other couples in their relationship. And the book is called Couples Determined to Make Marriage Great. Powerful stories for couples by couples. Our book launch will be September 25th this year in Waldorf, Maryland. And it is a part of our sixth annual conference, which is called Couples Fest, Make Marriage Great. And Couples Fest is a three-day event. You guys, we have so much planned for you. We want you to get your tickets. We have early bird tickets right now. It's only $125 for three days at a conference for two. Who does that? We're giving you a special right now. And the 23rd, their prices will go up. But we want you to make sure that you go to couplesfestexpo.com. You will have an opportunity to learn more about the conference. You have an opportunity to learn more about the book at makemarriagesgreat.com. We want you to get your book now because every couple on here has a special gift for you if you buy the book in advance. So get your pre -sale, order your pre-sale book right now and you will get a special gift from whichever couple you order your book from here on this conference. So, you know, we all got um, family and friends who are watching tonight. And so order your books. We, we got something special for you, but we want you to come to the book sale too if you're in the DMV. Or if you want to buy a ticket and fly out to Couples Fest, come on out. There's something for everyone at Couples Fest. Friday night is just fun, interactive games to just get out, get your dance on, learn some um, new dance steps, and just have fun with your sweetheart. And then on Saturday, we're going to have a live show. We're going to have uh, breakfast. Then we're going to have um, our speaker fest, you guys. It's going to be fun. And guess what? This year, we gave away a free wedding. I had a meeting with our bride on Friday. She's super excited. You guys get to go to their wedding and enjoy and meet this new couple. It's going to be so much fun. I mean, how many of us have been to a stranger's wedding? Just, you know, just go to a stranger's <laughs> wedding, right? So we all get to go to the wedding. And then on Sunday, we'll have our book launch. And there's brunch and worship on Sunday. So we're super excited for everyone. Awesome, awesome. It is so much and so it's needed for everything that we all are out here doing because um, it's rough out here and they don't know where to turn. And it's so good that you all can give them places in your areas or in, they can, you know, virtually, you know, God, like I said, God is very funny and we all learn virtual over this COVID season. <laughs> so we all know how to work that virtual, always know how to make things happen through virtually. So um, some of the things that we have coming up, uh, we have our marriage conference, which is October the 7th through the 9th. And I don't know, it's, it's something about greens that just like, wow, because we have Carlos and um, Catherine Green that will be our major speakers on that day. And we also have the um from the reality show which is a real show marriage huntsville alabama we have uh marceau and kim will be one of our pre um guest speakers as well and we will have a gala at ours now unlike um um miss green over there i was is uh three hundred dollars <laughs> you know but that's going to include your meals, your gala, your shirts, your bags as well. So we just ask you all to get busy, sign up for any of these events, especially if they're near you. Just like they all said, get the tools that's needed to save your marriage and get yourself around some positive couples. Our event is on the beach. It's on the, it's on the ocean front. So you're going to get a seaside view. It's, it's, it's downtown Miami. You know, once once you leave our presence, we're not responsible for what you do. You know, Miami can be enticing. You know, it's, it's it's a beautiful it's a beautiful venue. 
Um, we got some awesome, awesome educators and speakers coming in. Um, yeah. I think anybody that shows up will leave much better than they can. They, they would really enjoy themselves. And also, you can always catch us here once a month on Talk With The Turners. I don't always know the date, fellas. You know, sometimes you just, we got a card, we got a card tonight. I said, what? Tonight? For real? Well, I sent uh, him the flyer. He just don't read it, right, women? Fellas, <laughs> right, why, why would you read a flyer that the lady you sleep with at night sends you? I sleep with you every night. You don't send me a flyer. You tell me what's going on. So, listen. <laughs> See, I, see, I'm going to be calling somebody soon, right? <laughs> you know, you know that your brother said nothing, because they feel the same way. Like, really? You going you to email me? Then I just wake up from you last night. <laughs> well, I want to say thank you all. I appreciate you all. And thank you all that was watching us on Facebook Live. We hope that you all receive something from tonight, because it was very encouraging and very real. Nobody was on here perpetrating. Everybody was on here being real. And we're here for you. So if, if we can't do it, maybe the greens can do it for you. If the greens can't do it, maybe the peaks, peaks can do it for you. So reach out to someone and let them help you. You, are, you don't have to suffer out here alone. So once again, we want to say thank you all for joining us. And you all have a great rest of your night. Thank you guys. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Bye.